The musicians at Woodbridge Records take a certain pride in the once rundown neighborhood where they live and work. Woodbridge Records is named so because of this neighborhood that we live in, which is called Woodbridge. It's a historic neighborhood. A lot of these houses have been here for over 100 years. Even Ty Cobb, we used to play in the Detroit Tigers, used to live here back in the day and walk down to the baseball stadium. I moved in the shack about four years ago with Robbie. Slowly been working on the place, fixing it up. It's now become our headquarters. And um, the lot next door to the shack was overgrown when we moved into it. It was just covered in weeds and uh, kind of had the idea of like building a community garden. So we kind of just slowly, really, really slowly started working on it. And now we've got almost 30 raised beds out there. It's really become a community project. So dudes, this is Kwesi. So guys. The Woodbridge label has record deals with three bands. And now they're looking to expand. I met Kwesi a few months ago. He's in a group called The Anonymous. They deliver like pretty straightforward, conscious underground hip hop. I would be really stoked to maybe put out his record and see what it could do. I love to be part of the family. So you know? did you bring some tracks over? Oh, for I to listen did. To? Which one should I throw on? I'm gonna do Before I Do My Thing. Yeah. Before I do my thing, I do my other thing. Thing, 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 thing. Before I do my thing, I got my other thing lined up. Dwelling in the underground where aliens can't find us. Yeah, dog, getting grit. Sally Strong. Sounds good. It is very catchy. Yeah, it's the beat, catchy. too. Something about the beat that has like a really good groove to it. Too much of the drum and bass. Yellow cake, so the grape don't act like you don't like the taste. Before I do my other thing. So, how did you feel about Quasi stuff and him as in general? I, li I like Quasi. Like, the song sounds super raw. You can tell it was done on the cheap. The way things end up with us, you yeah. know, because we don't have a lot of money. It's good know. to know he's already used to that. Yeah, so should we put his record up? Absolutely. I yeah. think so, man. Yeah, yeah I, def I definitely yeah. think that it would be a good add to this this label. So I say let's do it, man. We'll shoot for July, put out the 12 inch. Yeah. It starts saving those pennies. It yeah. takes a lot of work to release a record album. One, two, three, four, no time for love. Now it's time for work. Tyree Guyton's new project will also require hours of work and lots of help. And he's enlisting local fourth and fifth graders to lend a hand. Guyton's latest idea will transform the landscape of Detroit, this time with 10,000 shoes. We're going to take a whole city block and we're going to cover it with shoes. Can you see covering a whole street with shoes? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. My upcoming project, it's a reflection of the homeless problem here in the city every Wednesday. I can look out my back window and I can see people standing in this long line to be fed and to get clothes. How do you fix that? Art is about what stands from your heart, creativity, and mind. I chose to, to talk about it. Art makes this world a better place. Wonderful! <laughs> the shoes tell a story and the symbolism of souls and moving from place to place. We've got schools throughout Michigan painting shoes. I like the fact that I can put it out there for everyday people and they can see it, but also they help to make it possible. They help to create it. This is the first shoe I ever wore. It's learning how to walk. The first time I said my first words. I had big feet. I used to play with these shoes or I just put polka dots on my shoes. I'm going to miss them. They were meaningful. I just couldn't wear them out. This is not my shoe. I don't know nothing about it. I found the shoe over there on that couch. <laughs> Getting kids interested in the arts is one way of preparing them for an uncertain future. And in Tyree's case, it's being done on a shoestring. But some art like music can be out of reach for many children because the instruments are too expensive. The Sphinx organization is bridging the gap with its overture program. The Detroit Public Schools the music programs are really suffering. So there's definitely no lack of need for a program like this in the city of Detroit. Overture program basically puts a violin in the hands of almost any kid who's interested. We give them a free violin, free instruction. Much better. So we have a special guest here today. 
and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself. I was invited to speak at the Overture program to advise the students what they can do, what's possible after junior high. It's nice to see you all today. Is anyone going to be a professional musician? Really? A lot of you. I've been in Sphinx for five years. I didn't like to practice, but once you learn to appreciate the music, and that's what Sphinx did for me, and then you'll learn to love it. And it always sounds a lot better, and it's always a lot harder when you hear professionals do it. But they were right where you were. How many times did you want to quit? Almost every time I picked up the horn until maybe my, the end of my junior year. Like, when you wanted to quit, what, what stopped you? I wanted to quit because I didn't want to play in front of people. But I used to have a horrible case of stage fright. I, I love to play, but I wanted to play for me. I didn't want to share it. I was always wondering about what other people think. But then I said, it's not about them. It's about me. And if they like me, that's OK, but I'm still going to play for me. I saw a lot of kids' faces change when I said I wanted to give up or I didn't want to practice. But now I'm going into music. And you could tell. They have the potential. So we have to make sure we thank our special guest, Ms. China Leitner. Thank you for coming. To see someone in their own community who's moving on to do something even greater. That was probably one of the better moments in the program so far. Coming up, Aww. China's audition is now less than a week away. Da, 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 de. At Woodbridge, they're rushing to get their vinyl album ready for the upcoming release party. And in John Manoogian's car design class, the pressure on the students is ratcheting up. I want to make sure that we cross the finish line at a thousand miles an hour. The new vinyl album by Andrew and his bandmates needs to be pressed in time for their upcoming release party. And Archer Records is one of the few companies in America that can do it. There's still about 14 vinyl pressing plants in the country doing this. We're the only ones in Michigan, the only one in Detroit, actually. First step is you take the granulated vinyl and you put it in a hopper. The vinyl goes through the extruder. It fills a cup roughly the size of a hockey puck. But when that's filled, it opens up and it slides into the press. So we actually press the grooves right into the record at that point. Now the press is closed at about 100 tons of pressure and it's being hit with steam. Put your finger in there, it's gonna look like a record. <laughs> when, when the record's completely filled, all the excess vinyl will uh, seep out the sides. And that's the trimming, you trim that off and we can regrind that. Am I into music? <laughs> well, you know, this kind of ruins you on it a little bit. But yeah, I, I am. I, I've always liked music. You know, Detroit has always respected musicians, and, and I've always been a music fan. And, and a lot of uh, the people we make records for are very talented. Hi, Mike. Gentlemen. Nice to see hey, you again. Man, how you doing? This is it, buddy. What do you think? When you get the records off the press, it's a lot different than getting a box of spindled CDs. It feels it feels real and it feels more substantial and it feels more present. Vinyl sounds better, man. It just it sounds like the roots. Dude, looks great, man. Yeah, the label turned out really nice. It did. I was noticing the number on here. Is this the total number of releases for Archer? Yeah, yeah, you're the uh, 17,000 records of gained. Damn. So you guys gonna have a big anniversary party for the 20,000? <laughs> if we make it. There's <laughs> definitely a sense of uh, an entrepreneurial spirit that's developed here due to the fact of no one else doing it for you. You know, I guess that's what it comes down to. I don't know, it's been really rewarding that all the work is like coming to a point of fruition where we're able to like, you know, actualize what we've always been thinking about. Hopefully all of our minds collaborating together will um, do some positive things in this neighborhood. Techno, hip hop, or classical, Detroit's music scene is thriving. But whether China Leitner can take her musical talents to the next level depends on how she does at her upcoming audition for Detroit's Wayne State University.
Her Sphinx coach, Otis, is going to make sure she's as prepared as she can be. Aw, what if I can't get up there? That mistake is gone. You've got all this other music to play. If you start swaying or you're looking, you're doing all kind of strange things. It helps me think. <laughs> yeah, let's scratch that, OK? Once your confidence goes, it's over. Because this will make or break the audition, OK? All right, let's try one more time.